He actually just said that. Well, I guess you can only wear a mask for so long, right? Survive. I got to be able to pay the rent this month. I got to be able to buy groceries for my kids to say, okay, let's put climate change as a slightly lower priority. Welcome back to Over Opinionated with yours truly, Jasmine Lane. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Couple of housekeeping notes before we really dive into Trudeau just blatantly lying on the world stage. Goodbye, Lou. His lying and communist ideas are so bad that even my dog Lulu is tired of hearing it and she had to leave the room. Now, before we get into that, as well as some other House debates, I know a lot of you do not like to just listen to Justin Trudeau, so don't worry, that will not be the entirety of this episode, but what he has said is so unbelievably important and very much worth a deep dive. You may just learn something you didn't know before. A friendly reminder to like this video, that helps YouTube push it out to more people. You can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, as that does help me to feel slightly more valuable in society, and comment your thoughts down below. Additionally, YouTube has been demonetizing every single one of my videos about climate change as of late, and there have been a lot of them. So this is my pathetic plea that demoralizes me as a human being, but desperate times, I tell ya. And if you have anything at all and you want to help support this show so we can keep going, there is a PayPal donation link in the description of this video. PayPal does not take a cut as YouTube does with any donations received in app. So that's definitely a better way to make sure that as much of your money as possible is actually going to help us keep the lights on over here. And the only thing that helps me feel slightly less embarrassed about that ask is Justin Trudeau embarrassing himself on the world stage. This is insane. Actually has become a way of helping with affordability, of putting more money in the pockets of people who are struggling. Because when we talk about fighting climate change, everyone has the sense that, oh no, big businesses and millionaires are going to find ways around it. And it's always hardworking consumers and ordinary folks that bear the brunt of the changes. And what we've had to do in Canada, what we've successfully done, is change that dynamic so it, our fight against climate change goes hand in hand with affordability. But that's where, as I was talking about earlier, we're facing a level of attacks, of misinformation, of disinformation uh, by people who are saying, no, 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 we have to stop the fight of cl in cli against climate change in Canada so we can put a little more money in your pockets, even though that's exactly the wrong thing for the planet, and it's actually the wrong thing for money in their pockets, and that's a lot of what the next year's election is gonna be about in Canada. How removed are you from real life, buddy? Who paid you off? Honestly, that is insane. There has been so much data real data, not cherry picked stats like climate change activists like to use, so much real data that has shown if you want to actually take care of the planet, the first thing you should do is make sure that you do not have a poor and struggling society. It's really, really easy when you're in a short term survive, I gotta be able to pay the rent this month, I gotta be able to buy groceries for my kids, to say, okay, let's, put climate change as a slightly lower priority. And that's something that's instinctive. When the storm comes, you want to hunker down and just sort of huddle up and wait for it to blow over. We can't do that around climate change. And unfortunately, we have an awful lot of political amplification of the kind of narrative that is directly opposed to that. Because as he said, when you are struggling, the last thing you can focus on is climate change because it doesn't matter. What matters is surviving. And that is the state that he has left many Canadians in today. In fact, the wage gap between elite, middle and poor is the largest that it has ever been. Most middle-class Canadians are actually closer to the poverty line. But yes, sure, Trudeau, tons and tons of misinformation. You go ahead and you lecture all of us about how much we need to care about this thing that's making you and all your friends rich after you fly to Brazil on your private plane. Like I always say, I'll start taking it seriously when you do. And that's the thing too, let's just think about this in a very common sense way. Do you really believe for a second that there was this catastrophic crisis that all of humanity was gonna be wiped out? Do you really believe that all of our world leaders who are pushing that agenda would actually still be flying on their private planes 
would actually still be ordering thousands of dollars worth of food, staying in the most luxurious hotels on our taxpayer dollars. Do you believe that they would be doing that if they knew that there was an impending doom that was a top priority? No. No, they wouldn't. And you know what? To summarize this whole insanity, here's a really, really good clip. This video is far longer than what I'm going to show, but wow, is it ever eye-opening. If you look, for instance, on death from climate change, that could be climate-related deaths like floods, droughts, storms, and wildfires, they're not killing us ever more. Actually, 100 years ago in the 1920s, they killed about 500,000 people, so half a million people each and every year. If you listen to most of the stories uh, in the media, you would imagine that it exploded much, much worse. No such thing. Since then, it's dramatically declined so that in 2020s, it's down below 10,000 people per year, a reduction of more than 98%. For instance, malaria. We've been told that because of climate change, you'll see much more malaria because the, the mosquito can live many more places. But remember, malaria is mostly an outcome of poverty. Malaria used to be endemic in most parts of the world, and it's since declined dramatically. And the World Health Organization estimate out to 2060, it will decline another 64%. But they also make the calculation what will happen with climate change. It will decline almost as much. It will only decline 58%. Yes, you almost can't tell the difference up there, but that's a point, right? we're seeing a dramatic decline. Things are getting better, but with climate change, they get better slightly slower. It's the same thing with hunger. We're being told that with climate change, we can no longer feed everyone. But actually, what we see when we look at how many people die from hunger, we've seen a dramatic decline, and it's likely to continue out to 2050, according to the World Health Organization. But with climate, it will still decline dramatically, but slightly slower. We rarely talk about the fact that as we are making more and more climate policies, that also impacts us negatively. That actually pulls away resources from us. Just to take a look at energy prices here in the UK, energy prices have been coming down for the last two centuries, but now they're starting to go up because of climate policy. So if you look at the gas price, it went down for almost two centuries, and then the last two decades it's been going up, not just because of climate policies, you can certainly also see Ukraine in there, but also because of climate policy. The same thing we see with electricity prices, dramatic drop in prices, and now the last two decades, an increase. Climate policies have real cost, and we need to be honest about that. And since we have to pay that as well, we actually have to start talking about what are the costs, what are the benefits. Almost all politicians love to tell you we should go net zero by 2050. But no politicians have ever asked, how much will this cost? I, I think I know why. But we should ask that. And it actually turns out that there's been no good economic estimates of what the total cost is until now. So a couple of months ago, uh, the journal Climate Change Economics actually made a special issue where they asked a lot of economists to try and find out how much will this cost. They both made one estimate of what's the benefit and three estimates of what's the cost. I'm just going to show you the average over the century. How much good will this do? If we go net zero, it will have real benefits. We actually estimate the annual benefit will be in the order of $4.2 trillion each and every year. That's avoided damages. This is definitely worth thinking about and making sure that we have. But the stuff that they don't tell you is that the cost will be about $25 trillion each and every year. This means it's an incredibly bad deal. Every dollar spent will deliver 16 cents back on the dollar. That's a terrible idea. Also, it's entirely unaffordable. Right now, or last year, all governments in the world raised about taxes of $15 trillion. We're talking about spending almost twice as much as that. There's no way we can do all of that. And let's top that off with the very real reality that Canadians are facing with Trudeau's ideological nonsense. After nine years of this Liberal NDP government, we know that they are just not worth the cost, and the evidence is everywhere you look. In Ontario, for the first time ever, over a million people visited a food bank in just one year. That's thanks to the radical Liberal NDP carbon tax. Ontario families say they just can't keep up with the mountain of debt and the taxes that this Prime Minister has put
poured all over them. I would like to read an extract from a report that came out today from the Insurance Bureau of Canada, and I quote, Summer of 2024 ranks as the most destructive season in Canadian history for insured losses due to severe weather. In only two months, July and August, this summer eclipsed the worst year on record and has pushed 2024 year-to-day tally over $7.7 billion in severe natural catastrophes, Mr. Speaker. What's the answer from the Leader of the Opposition? Let the planet burn. We won't take this on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I thought the carbon tax was supposed to fix all that. They won't call a carbon tax election because they know exactly what Canadians will say. 2023 was the eighth consecutive year that food bank usage rose. By some great coincidence, it was also the eighth consecutive year of this Liberal government. So how many more people need to visit or need to be forced to a food bank before the environment minister admits that taxes are up, the costs are up, the crime is up, and that his time is up? I'd love to know your thoughts on this matter. I'm Jasmine Lane, and boy, am I ever frustrated with Justin Trudeau lying on the world stage, lying about Canada, lying about what he has done to us. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, let's continue this conversation in the comment section. Percent of global emissions yeah, but if right you could now. answer my question, if we spend $50 trillion to become carbon neutral in the United States of America by 2050, you're the Deputy Secretary of Energy. Give me your estimate of how much that is going to reduce world temperatures. So, so first of all, it's a net cost. Um, it's what uh, benefits we're having from getting our act together and reducing all of those climate benefits. We're seeing. Let me ask again. Maybe I'm being. Right now maybe I'm not being country. clear. If we spent fifty trillion dollars to become carbon neutral by two thousand and fifty in the United States of America, how? How much is that going to reduce world temperatures? This is a global problem. So we need to reduce our emissions and we need to do everything we can. How much, if we do our part, countries. is it going to reduce so world we're temperatures? So we're 13 percent of global emissions. You don't right know, now. do you? You don't know, do you? You can do the math. We need to. You don't know, do you, Mr. Secretary? So we're 13 percent of global emissions. If you know, why won't you we tell went, me? If we went to zero, that would be 13 percent. You don't know, do you? You just want us to spend $50 trillion dollars. And you don't have the slightest idea whether it's going to reduce world temperatures. Now, I'm all for carbon neutrality, but you're the deputy secretary of the Department of Energy, and you're advocating we spend trillions of dollars to seek carbon neutrality, and you can't, and this isn't your money or my money, it's taxpayer money, and you can't tell me how much it's going to lower world temperatures? There or you won't tell me? You know, but you won't? In my heart of hearts, there is no way the world gets its act together on climate change unless the U.S. leads. Tell me how much it's the going US to reduce. To you, ca you can't tell me. Either that or you won't. Percent of global emissions. Yeah, but if right you could now. answer my question, if we spend $50 trillion 